Hey, how's it going, you guys? This is Pat Platypus here, and it's time to review a couple more episodes of Yu Yu Hakusho. Episode 23. Dude, this was fucking awesome. <laughs> oh my god. So, like, the first section of the episode is younger Tagoro, right? And we all know how younger Tagoro works. He has the percentages. 30% up against this monster. And it was nasty as fuck. He just goes in, catch, break. Punch just blows open its guts. I'm like, dude, that's disgusting, but it's amazing at the same time. So that was badass and nasty and disgusting as fuck. And only 30% he like cracks the ground and shit. That was awesome. Then we get a little section with uh, the sister of Hiei. I forget her name. Yukina or something? I don't know. Um, she uh, has the birds there, and the birds are too cute to die, but too stupid to live, and they keep hanging out with her, but she finally gets them to leave, you know. Um, we get a nice little Hie flashback about he got the Jigan eye, or whatever it's called, put into him surgically. Not really much on that, just kind of a brief little flashback, but, um, yeah, it had something to do with his sister, I guess. We'll probably get more of that later. But yeah, a little bit of development for Hiei, that's really good. That stuff with the girl was just devastating. And the mob boss dude, who is voiced by the guy who played Oolong from Dragon Ball, by the way. I didn't catch that when he was talking normally. But once he started shouting more, he really sounded like Oolong from the original Dragon Ball, so I caught that. But, uh, yeah, so that's the stuff with Hiei and the sister and Tagoro and everything. The main party, though, I just have one thing to say. Gon and Killa, where you at? I'm just saying. Because Yusuke and Kuwabara are fucking up names left and right. And Gon and Killua could barely fight jack shit throughout all of Hunter x Hunter. I know it's not a fair comparison. They're kids, the power scaling was different, whatever. But it's just funny to see these two dudes go in and just wreck shit like on some overpowered level shit. When Gon and Killua were always getting fucking schooled by everyone they met. So, Gon and Killua, where you at? Just saying. But... It was epic seeing them take out the spider. Really crazy animation on Kuwabara when he took out the sword and like they did like epic pan around and like it like zoomed his body and shit. It was like on some SpongeBob shit, like bring it around town, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, he cuts up the spider. Yusuke does like a fucking John Ken on it. Like I know this came before uh uh, Hunter x Hunter, but it's the way I thought he was gonna do a shotgun, but then he just did a regular punch, so it reminded me of the John Ken, but uh yeah. Then there's that really badass part where, like, the epic forest fire and shit, and they just walk out like, yeah, what's up? Fucking aura it up and shit, that was awesome. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much the whole episode. We have the mob boss dudes, actually, and they, um, they're placing bets, and the dude thinks he's gonna rig the bets. He's like, oh, they're not gonna vote for the intruders, but the intruders are really strong, so they'll kill these guys. I'll make all the money. But no, this one dude is betting tons of money on the intruders, and he got like this scar over his eye, or I think it was this eye maybe. He seems like he might be vaguely important, I don't know, he knew that these guys were, you know, spirit related, and that they've been hunting demons and shit, so he might have some kind of knowledge on spirit world stuff. I don't know if he'll like be super important later, but for now he's pretty cool, he's pretty important for this arc, I guess. But yeah, he's doing, losing money left and right, <laughs> that was funny. But yeah, and then he sends in these triad dudes, and at first they introduce them. Then there's all these explosions in the forest, and then Yusuke and Kubar walk out, and I'm like, did those guys just get off-screen one-shotted and shit? No, they didn't, but uh, honestly, I would have been okay with that, because Yusuke and Kubar were on a fucking roll. But yeah, when they come up against Taguro, there's, there's obviously going to be some fucking problems. I mean, 30% was just, it was devastating. Can you even imagine, like, even, like, 60? Oh my god, Yusuke would be dead. But yeah... And we still have to see what Hiei is going to do. He really hasn't gotten to the actual mansion yet. He stayed with, uh, he didn't stay with Kuwabara and Yusuke and Botan. He just kind of, um, like, slept near them. He kind of kept an eye on them, but he hasn't, like, interacted with them yet. So we'll have to see where that goes. But, yeah, really fucking enjoyable episode. We got a little bit of character development for Hiei. Some really, really solid story progression. Some really badass action and just badass characters with, like, in Yusuke and Kuwabara right now. Uh, Tagoro, seeing the power of 30%. It's a great episode, 8.5 out of 10. Really, really liked it. So yeah, now I'll talk about episode 24. Okay, you guys, so episode 24. Still another pretty good episode. We get... Uh, one thing I just want to mention from my previous review, I didn't mention, when Tagoro, younger Tagoro, like, just destroyed that fucking beast on some nasty shit, he was also talking about how... 
he doesn't really want to, and now he feels bad for doing it. So there's clearly more to his character. He clearly isn't just like a total asshole. So we'll have to see more about that, but it was definitely interesting um, that he had that characterization. I like that. Uh, then we have this episode, which is... Yusuke and Kuwabara versus those three dudes, and they pretty much fodderize all three of them. You have the chick who's not actually a chick because it's Togashi, and he fucking loves pulling that shit. Yusuke, he, uh, grabs a titty and he goes in, he goes for the feel, and he's like, oh, no, that's a, that's a guy right there. Woo! Trap card sprung, but, uh, yeah. And he beats the shit out of him, too. Like, it's pretty epic. He's like, titty punch drop kick to the ground, slams their head into the wall. That was pretty awesome. Then they fight the dude, and he can turn invisible, and he has like these wolverine claws, but what they end up doing is turning the corner. Kuwabar can sense his spirit energy even though he's invisible. He turns the corner, massive shotgun, nowhere to dodge in the hallway, slam to the wall. That was really badass. Then the last guy tries to use Botan as a fucking like, hostage, but she just slips out of her jacket. That's the first thing I thought, too. The way he was holding her, I was like, could she just slip out of her jacket? And then, like, a few seconds later, Yusuke's, like, slip out of the jacket. So that was good. And, uh, yeah, then they just double kick him, and he's down in one shot. That was kind of disappointing. I was hoping something, you know, more flashy would kill the biggest guy, but whatever. You got the other dudes betting the whole time, and the, the, the main mob dude we've been following with, like, the bump on his head and shit. He's just losing money left and right to this dude with the scar. That dude's a badass. He's slick, dude. But, yeah, what ends up happening, though, is all that's left is Tagoro brothers, and, uh, what ends up happening is, I believe he bets on Tagoro, and the other dude bets, like, 60 trillion or some shit on the intruders, Yusuke and Kuwabara, and none of the other dudes are in on this, they're all like, okay, we'll just watch you guys ruin your own careers if you fucking lose, so that's the bet, and we also get a scene where Kuwabara talks to the sister, and also, a little bit more flashback with Hiei. We see her as, like, a little girl, and really it's probably just to establish that Hiei cares about her, which it's his sister, so that's kind of obvious, but... Yeah. Those were okay. I guess you can call that character development, but it's not really anything substantial. It's just kind of a very gradual thing. Hopefully it's building up something more, but... For now, it's just establishing how much he cares about her or whatever, and that's pretty obvious since it's his sister, so there's not really any point to it, but... Yeah, so there's that. And now it's going to be to the Tagoro brothers versus Yusuke and Kuwabara. And I know younger Tagoro is just a disgusting freak of a monster, so I don't know how they're going to get out of this. There's no way they'll win unless he decides not to use all his power, but just have to wait and see. Like I said, I read the manga a long time ago, but I do not remember how this turns out. So, yeah, that'll be interesting. But overall, I'd probably give this episode like an 8 out of 10. I thought it was a very good episode. The fighting scenes were well animated. Him, Kuwabara actually talking to Yukino, that was cool. Him using the telepathy her telling them to leave, but they can't feel Tagoro's, like, energy, either of the Tagoro brothers, and, uh, I keep wanting to call younger Tagoro just Tagoro for some reason. The other dude just seems so, like, non-existent for, for some reason, even though he's totally there. But, um, yeah, the Tagoro brothers are probably suppressing their spirit energy. So, yeah, this was definitely a, uh, very good episode. I liked, you know, the stuff with Hiye, giving his character a little bit more to him. He's not just a scumbag. Um, the characterization in that last episode for Tagoro I mentioned. But yeah, it was really cool. Fucking Togashi pulling a classic fucking, I'm gonna make this fucking guy look like a chick, cause why? Fuck you, that's why. So yeah. Um, it's a good episode though. Uh, 8 out of 10. Very good episode of Yu Yu Hakusho. So, thanks for watching this video. Tell me what you guys thought of this epi these episodes of Yu Yu Hakusho in the comments below, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.